Fantastic 7LA, the Gene Scene and Itchies present Launceston Group Lava in special. is a four-man group, Rudy Valentino drums, Nick Walkham keyboards, Phil Gaunt bass guitar, Peter Hutchinson lead guitar. In a moment we'll meet each member of the group Lava individually. How did Lava get it together? I had approached Nick and asked him if he was interested in forming a group. He said yes, if we could get the uh, members. It had to be rock. I had put an advert in the paper and I found um, one guy who was interested in playing drums. And I hadn't heard him before, but he, he said he'd play with us if we could get a guitarist. We couldn't find a guitarist, and he got a job in another band. So that left Nick and I on our own again. And uh, everything sort of stayed at a stalemate until Peter came back up to Launceston from Hobart. I was playing in a band called Zoo then in Hobart, which had uh, been working around the university and uh, various discos in Hobart, and also played at Itchies up here mm -hmm. a couple of times. So how did you get Peter then? Oh, I think Peter was uh, getting a bit sick of the scene in Hobart and decided to come home for a bit of a refreshment, refresh his uh, outlook on music, etc. And um, the chance came that, you know, we could get back together again and get a band going that uh, we thought could be a good thing. And then uh, once we had the three of us, Nick and myself and Peter, the problem was getting a drummer. And, and this uh, is where the ad went into the paper. Yes, and this proved a pretty difficult job to get. I didn't see the ad. I think Peter heard about Rudy, didn't you? Yeah, I heard about Rudy from uh, an old bass player I used to play with called Craig Zaley. And uh, he told me that there was an American drummer in town who was really good. So uh, I found out... Uh, how to get in touch with him, and uh, we turned up on his doorstep. Yeah, good on you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 
was Sunshine. And Sunshine is probably the most commercial. It's light, it's rhythmical. Uh, if we do anything at all close to top 40, I think this would be the tune. Let me write this one. Yeah, um, I wrote it um, uh, just after Jody had split up. I sort of was thinking about how to make a, a sort of catchy song. So I thought you've, you've got to have a, a catchy riff in it. And so after a couple of weeks of thinking about that, I, I sort of got the catchy riff and then based a song around the riff. And it, uh, it just occurred to me that this was, these, this was the um, lyrics that had to be for this song. Flesh in the well, Dark. Yes. Now, if, if you look at any top 42, and what, do, what do the lyrics mean? You know, it's, it's a rhythmically catchy and, and uh, bouncy. Mm. You know, I think the lyrics are probably not as important as, as the, what, what we did uh, musically on it. Very commercial. We, yeah. we all admit yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the feeling you were uh, trying to create then is sunshine. Huh? Yeah, bright. Uh, everything's really good. That type of feeling. Everything's going right. Uh, the world's at peace. That certainly is a good one. Lead guitarist, Peter Hutchison. When I was about 14, I first uh, got interested in uh, electric music. Uh, the first band I was in was called Stirring of the Brew, which is quite a while back, that's in about 67. And uh, played with a couple of schoolmates then, and uh, we were mainly doing Hendrix and Cream type material when that was a big thing then. Well, Hendrix and Clapton were my first uh, major influences. Uh, Richie Blackmore was another influence, the guitarist with Deep Purple. Uh, he styled he, a lot of his playing uh, along the lines of saxophone, uh, which uh, gave him rather a unique style. What about your own style? Do you, f do you find there's anything uh, that's standing out as, as distinctive, you know, that, uh, in your own playing? Uh, I try and use harmony a lot. Uh, I'm playing instead of just a flourish of, ra of notes, I try and use... Uh, Harmony playing and sustained notes and things like that. He's trying to grow a second hand at the moment on his left side. So I can play chords and leads at the same time. It's going to get a double neck guitar. <laughs> and uh, tell me about some of the other groups you played with, Peter, before joining Lava. Uh, well, Sweaty Betty was one of the major bands I was in before. Uh, we recorded a single called Every Little Thing down in Hobart and that was released in the end of, towards the end of 1970. Got up to about number 21 on the chart. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> but the band had split up. They bought the, all the copies. <laughs> the band had split up by the time uh, the record got released so that because of the lack of promotion on it, it didn't do as well as it could have. But uh, that was with Trevor Jones who's now gone to England and playing in the band over there. Are they all groups here in Tasmania? Uh, no, I've played on the mainland in a band called Mother Superior. with uh, playing the churches. <laughs> with uh, Andy James on vocals, uh, who used to be in the Andy James Asylum, and Ian Robinson on drums, who used to play with Running Jumping Standing Still. Another band that uh, played was a band called Life, which had Phil Gaunt playing bass, who's now with the band in Lava, uh, and Dave Witt on drums and that band played quite a bit uh, around the northwest coast, uh, Excalibur Disco in Burnie, uh, Disco in Alveston, and uh, Surf Club in Devonport. And also we played at Humpty's in Hobart, which was a disco going quite strongly in about uh, 68, 69. The band Life also played uh, Thirsty Morn, which was a disco going in Launceston a while ago, uh, run by um, Dave Keeling and another guy. Uh, that was quite a good disco. It had three floors. It was in the old YMCA building in Brisbane Street. Uh, we played there quite a bit and got good reactions from the crowds there. You've been overseas too, have you? Yeah, I went to England in 72 uh, to join up with uh, Trevor Jones, who uh, was being managed at that time by Eddie Kennedy, who was the ex-taste manager. Uh, we were paid a retainer to practice uh, 20 pounds a week just to keep the band going so we could practice and uh, made a few trial recordings at Command Studios over there. The, the band never uh, got off the ground and uh, I returned to Tasmania. That's uh, one of the key songs to the uh, rock opera, uh, part of the theme song there at the beginning 
there's also another part of it with different words and I'm hoping to get it together later on this year, perhaps in towards September, and we'll have the um, band providing the musical backup. Keyboards man, Nick Walkham. Very sh uh, short one act, so half an hour. Uh, it's probably designed for an itchy type show, it was on the Saturday night. Well, tell us a little about this song there. He wrote it one when, night while well, he's having a nightmare, I think. Oh, that's the sort of basis of the idea, a nightmarish scene. Um, as the actual uh, rock opera is about um, the pre-civilization um, sorcerer whose name is Exaltaton, who is uh, raised from death after he's been mummified for 3,000 years. And it's just the story of his awakening. This character is really groovy. <laughs> Pretty heavy stuff. You're, you're really digging. <laughs> it's got a really frantic lead break uh, in it too. Uh, it's just uh, a real sort of freak out. The basis of the song is a type uh, cacophony type thing. It's got this um, or two repetitive rhythms, uh, sort of hypnot hypnotic effect, um, especially combined with the volume that's to be played at. And um, there's these sort of odd sounds occurring in this odd rhythm, sort of combining sort of hypnotic Hawkwind type effect. The odd rhythm is an understatement because I think I had more problems than anyone in, in feeling it. So for a drummer it's hard because it's a two, four type of rock beat feeling. That's, that's a natural thing, but, but the, uh, the lead break rhythm in, in death is, is quite different. In fact, that's the first beat of four. It's sort of like a reggae beat. It's something that's going in Jamaica now. Uh, it takes a while to feel it. You have to do it quite a few times before, at least before I got the proper feeling for the tune. It's not one of your get up and dance to songs. It's more of a listening song. It's, it's uh, a fairly different thing to do in lots of songs. It's designed for the audience. It's a problem there. So you've got to try and balance out your music in Tasmania anyway. Because uh, uh, most of the stuff you play, you have to play that someone can dance to. It's uh, not very many places or opportunities that you get to play to a listening audience in Tasmania. We haven't played very many and uh, when we do play a lot of the uh, listening type music, you know, we've had to sort of doctor it up a bit over the last few months and get uh, different things going so that people can get up and dance to it. We've got to try and please ourselves as well as the people that have come along, you know. They've come along to dance, not to listen on the basic majority anyway. I, th I think though the um, audience, audiences that we have today are, are much better, they're far more appreciative of what you play. I'm finding this, um, you know, I'm really quite happy with the audiences uh, that we've been playing to at the moment, they're, they're really good. Yeah, and it's good to play for an audience that can appreciate a song that's not a strictly toe-tapping dancing rhythm. And I enjoy it because uh, I played in dance bands all my life and finally to get into a group where you could maybe have a little freedom rhythmically, uh, it's much more enjoyable for me. This is what's so good about the whole band we've got going. We're we're not at all. We don't feel at all personally restricted in the music we're playing. We can we just sort of put everything together naturally, and it just comes out. Itchy's Amalgamated Arts Emporium proudly presents Jasper and Lava. Don't miss this energy charged evening, Friday, April 23rd. That's Friday week at the Albert Hall. Get your rocks off at Itchy's in the Albert Hall, Friday week with Jasper and Lava. Drummer, Rudolph Valentino. Is that your stage name, Rudy? No, that's my honest but true name. You were christened uh, Rudy Valentino. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Rudolph Valentino, thanks. When did you start out playing the drums, Rudy? Oh, I started out on drums at about the ripe old age of 14 after three tries at, uh, at a few other instruments. I came from a musical family, so I started playing piano at the age of 10. It lasted about two years. My grandmother started uh, the piano thing, because she, she played in the silent movie houses, and that's, she happened to be playing uh, when Rudolph Valentino was on the screen, so that's how I got my name, indirectly. Well, from my piano career of two years, which I gave up because I just didn't like to practice scales, uh, I had to do something, so I had another music teacher in the family who happened to be a clarinet and sax teacher, so I studied clarinet for six months, that was. I did worse 
I mean, clarinets and on the piano, so I gave that up. And at the age of 14, I decided I wanted to be a drummer. New Orleans is my hometown. And uh, we decided to come to Australia. And I never thought, my wildest dream was that I'd ever get back into music again. Uh, I decided, went over to Barrett's studio. Uh, I got a few students together after giving a few demonstrations and, and taught a few, uh, a few nights a week. In September was when uh, I had a knock on the door one night and these, these three characters walked in. <laughs> Peter, Phil, and Nick, and they asked me if I'd uh, be interested in joining a band. And this is how Lava originated. This next track, Siren, was uh, recorded live at the Basin concert. And uh, we played up there, when was it, last uh, December, uh, playing on top of the shed there to the crowd in the first basin. And uh, it was a recording done on a cassette recorder with two microphones. So.
bass guitarist Phil Gaunt. The first group that I uh, joined, I was lead singer. <laughs> At that stage I wasn't playing any instrument. I started pretty late. I was about uh, oh, nearly 18 when I started playing in bands. And uh, I started playing with a guy who was now my brother-in-law. He had a band going. And uh, nobody in the band could sing. I could sing a little bit better than them, so I turned out to be the singer in the band. Do you do any singing in the group? Yeah, I sort of share the singing now with Nick. And um, we sort of do it about 50-50 now. Have you played with the other groups in, uh, in Australia or Tasmania? Yes, so I've played a couple of bands on the mainland and several bands here. I... Uh, Played with Peter before in Life, which was uh, quite a good band in this state at the time. We seemed to get a lot of work and uh, I think we stuck together for a couple of years. Oh, Love has been uh, one of the most interesting bands I've been in so far, I'd say, because uh, apart from one that I was in the mainland, we're doing a lot of our original material and sort of makes it... Uh, a lot more interesting to play than somebody else's gear. I spent about uh, four years in Melbourne. I went overseas and uh, came back from overseas after about 12 months and uh, settled into Melbourne. And I joined up there with some guys that I used to play in a band in Tasmania with, which was called Ida May Mac. Yeah, no. And uh, it was Tony Naylor and uh, a few other guys. And uh, we played around Melbourne for quite some time. Um, we did a few demonstration tapes and things. We had a lot of promises for singles and different uh, sessions promises, but nothing ever eventuated. The whole thing always fell through for some reason. We're being ripped off left, right and centre by promoters and uh, management by the tune of about 20%. So... Uh, after uh, that band folded and Tony and myself joined up with Phil Manning and a drummer called Tony Butel and uh, we formed a group called Willie and the Philtones uh, who came to Los and played one gig here. As it was well disastrous, as, wasn't it? It was a disastrous gig, yeah. Uh, Why was that? I don't know. Hardly anyone came, I think. No, but it's been like that ever since I can remember. Um, whenever Phil Manning comes back to town, hardly anybody comes. Yeah, keep your elbows on the table, huh? Right. Yeah, get in there. Anyway, Willie and the Phil Tones went for about uh, three, four months. Um, we did about half a dozen television appearances in Melbourne, and uh, things were looking good, and then uh, for some reason I got the boot out of the band, <laughs> and uh, a friend of the drummers started playing bass, and uh, those guys started backing Brian Cadd and they were the original backing band for Brian Cadd. And uh, eventually uh, they went their separate ways and Tony was left as the only one left with Brian. And uh, I came back to Tasmania about oh, 18 months or more ago now and uh, looked around for a long time trying to get back into a band but couldn't find anyone to play with. And this was about the time Lava came together. We had a rehearsal and... Uh, got, uh, got one of the songs. Got one of the original songs. What is it, Let My Head Go Free? Let My Head Go Free, which uh, is one that I'd been carrying around for quite some time. And we got that off in the first night. Yeah, big <laughs>
68, I think, at the age of 16, blue condition. How long did they go for? Uh, it went for about two years, and uh, then that eventually split, or probably one and a half years, be closer. And uh, through through the um, earnings we made out of that band, I was, I was fortunate to be able to uh, buy an amplifier, which uh, Petey, Petey used. Petey used recording these tracks, actually, so it's an old golden tone, it's quite a few years old. And I bought that amplifier for, I think it was $160. And then uh, from there, I, I joined another band a little later. Um, and uh, I bought myself uh, an organ, but um, that band split up and I was repossessed because I couldn't keep up with the high purchase payments. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is a general problem, I think, with most musicians, uh, particularly fellas that, you know, need... Uh, well, I, I should imagine keyboards would run it to yes, they pretty do. expensive. Yes, I was, I was still going to school and I just couldn't pay it off if I wasn't working. And so I went the, the way of many. But um, then I sort of left school and um, got a job at, uh, or got a scholarship and... Um, Shortly after I got the scholarship, I, I bought the um, organ which I have now, which I've sort of done a bit of work on, converted it. It was um, badly smashed up in a car accident we had in a group I was in at the time. Um, Jody, the roadie, went to sleep at the wheel and had a few thousand dollars worth of damage to the equipment and my organ was amongst it. Was anybody injured? Any of the uh, the, the, roadie, the roadie was was knocked unconscious by my organ which was sitting on top of all the gear and hit him in the back of the head. Poetic uh, justice. Yeah. <laughs> From there it went through the, the windscreen of the of the combi van and did a few somersaults along the road so I'm told. Anyway, I, I, got it, I got it rebuilt and it's um, better than it was before now. I'm quite happy with it. How about that group, Jody? How, how long are you with them? And uh, they were, Jody went through two stages. The first stage had Dave Witt on drum, on drums who's already who's also played in life with Peter and Phil, so it's quite a small world really. And um, <coughs> that was the first stage. That band went for a for a year. It also had John Chester on bass guitar, and then it split up. Uh, we won the Battle of the Sounds here and got up to Sydney. I think you won the Battle of Sounds one year too, didn't you, Peter? And mm, the year before. That was with Sweaty Betty, Betty yeah. Mm. Which was, the Battle of the Sounds in those days was quite a big competition. Right. So it was very good, actually, sponsored by um, some maker of chocolates. Hoadley's, I think it was. Mm. And um, that you really used to boost the, the local scene with this prize of a, of a, trip, to, of a trip to Sydney. 
and so this was a big thing. A anyway, recording contract. Too. Yes. Mm. Anyway, we got up to Sydney and played there, and we actually came fourth. Fourth out of all the entrants from all around Australia. Mm. I think Sweaty Betty came fourth too, didn't they? Uh, I wouldn't uh, disclose. We heard, we did hear that. Though. Yeah. Anyway, they, they said we'd come fourth, so we were really quite happy with that. I broke my toe about five minutes before we had to go on stage, actually. <laughs> and we were fighting, fighting with the drummer. <laughs> but, um, his karate kicks don't come off all the time. <laughs> and, um, that band split up towards the end of the year. Everybody sort of split up. They sort of, everyone went in all different directions up all around Australia. And I happened to stay in Launceston. And, uh, then we formed a new one with the lead guitarist who was in Hobart, and, uh, the band was mainly in Hobart except for the uh, bass guitarist who is now in England and myself who are in Launceston. We used to drive down to Hobart for bookings and, and that, that band eventually split up after a year. Because and from here you flowed into lava then? Yes, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> the music makers, uh, how, how, how did this song come about? Uh, Steph wrote those, That's right? right. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> she gave me the words and I, I um, fitted in the music. Uh, just like that, that just, uh, everything seemed to fit together. And it just occurred within... That's your old lady, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That occurred in about five minutes, so I had the music for it, for mm. the uh, lyrics. Just very, very clicky. Very fast song, very put together very fast. We sort of played through once or twice, and that was it. We were gonna come together very quickly. I think of the, uh, the tapes, uh, probably Music Makers was the least... Uh, uh, Appreciated one because well we were in the studio and didn't have much time, and we could have we could have gone through Music Makers and spent the whole day on it. We didn't get it exactly like we wanted it, and probably if we had to do it again. It would probably take on a different uh, mood. Mm. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
This has been Lava in Special on...